I sat down with these five event based creators to have each of them brutally rank themselves. I made eight statements and had them all place who they felt was the best to worst in each category as well as give their reasoning why. I do want to clarify that each answer is purely opinionated and I made sure to choose five creators who are close with each other in skill and friendship to make the decisions even harder. With that being said, who is the best at events? Oh, best at events. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty broad category. I'd say the way I interpret this would be most consistent. I get like consistently the best. So the order that I would go here would be me, and then it would be Toth. Kalen, Ubi, and then Fruit. And that's my order based off of like the competitiveness of the events that everyone plays in and the consistency overall. Well, I think best at events is a, a like crazy question, but it's like out of the five people here, probably I'd say in first it'd have to be Kel just for his insane resume and just how he, I guess, entered the event scene. Like, I mean, what? He got like six first in PB in a row and PB is widely known as like the most comp event. It's kind of crazy to say Kel wouldn't be first. As for second, I think it's a battle between Toph or Kalen there. I feel like Toph has had more dominance. Before Kel came, he was kind of seen as the best player. And I guess you could say he was Kel before Kel. And it's kind of a little cringe, but... <laughs> And then uh not only am I good friends with him, but I just I just feel like he's had a lot of dominance over the past year or two or three ish, just uh, over my captain events in general. He done make Kalen third. Kalen's just been so consistent all the time. He's always placed top three in like literally everything. He's just kind of good at everything. I can't lie. As for like the fourth and fifth spot, me and Fruit have only started playing team events like as of recently. He got in PB not too long ago. Mayhem wasn't that, that long ago either. And he's placed good in all of them. He hasn't even placed bad in really any of them. Yeah, I guess he had one. I think it was his first PB. He had a bad performance. Well, bad, but he got like 10th or 11th. But just out of these five people, 11th would be a bad performance. So I mean, uh, as for like PB, I would say I'm better than Fruit. For Mayhem, I don't think I've played enough to say which one of us is better. So I'd probably put myself fourth and then Fruitberry is fifth. Although he does dominate MCC, but like quite often. So, but I can't compare that as I also do not test. So, but yeah, he is probably fifth and I would put myself fourth. I think it might be getting closer at the top level, but it would go Kel, me, Kaylin, Ubi, and then Fruit. I have Kel first just because he has a rap sheet of so many great performances and events. Recently, he hasn't had as many dominant performances, but it's not because like I think he's gotten worse. I just think a few other players have gotten better and kind of like reached up to his level. So I think I'm getting closer to him as well. But right now, you just got to put Kel for still. He still has it. I think I'm close. Kalen's pretty close as well. Kalen just doesn't have the PvP as much. So he still gets all his movement points, but loses that a little bit there. Albi's more of a choker and Fruit just doesn't have as much experience with events. So so Kel, I have it first. I think he is the best at events because every time he's in an event, he was absolutely insane. And I don't think he's ever done bad in an event in his entire life. The only reason I'm putting me at second is because of just sheer amount of events I've played. Like I've probably played four times the events of everyone in this entire list. I may not have as consistently high of a score in like MCC type events, like MCC block wars, PB, like the mini game style events. I may not be as high individually. I have an insane track record because I've just won so much over the years. I think I'll have to give myself a bone because it is a very broad question. Um, Kalen, Kalen, I threw it third. Kalen will never He's also kind of like Kelly will never do bad. I don't think he's played as much events over the years. Because I think back to Kel as well. He was part of the UHC community and stuff. He, he was a grinder. Kaylin, I don't think he's played as much. Um, same same reason I would give the top. Like, all five people on this list I think are insane. But Toph and Ubi, I kind of threw them in top four and Ubi five. For honestly, literally no reason. Just probably more of a playtime thing, and that's it. I'm gonna put Kel first. This totally makes sense. I feel like anyone that hasn't put Kel in first has a uh, funny ego. Um, Kel has basically proven that he can very reliably place well in events and has a nice range. However, I am self cocky, so I put myself in second. Uh, I think I I haven't had as, as many events as some of the other people to prove how good I am at events, but I still have. Like I think I think someone posted a like a post-it card of people's like rundowns of what they've played. And I've won like four out of 20, which is good. In third, I'd put Toph. 
Um, in the main events that I think of, like PB, Mayhem, uh, Mania, and Origins, I'm shocked he's only won once. This guy is so scary, and I feel like I don't, I don't get it. I feel like he's so good, but he just like maybe he's just a third merchant. But I'm scared of him. But I think he's definitely deserved like third out of these five because it's really hard to rank these people. They're all really good. Number four, if I've put fruit, fruit is harder to rank in this case since I've only ever been in the same event as Fruit, I think, twice. Uh, but I'm still scared of him. And also, he has a different, like, range of events that he's played in because obviously, out of the five of us, he's the only one that's played uh, MCC. So you have that, like, small bump of, man, he's really good at this. But you can't... It's hard to gauge that in the grand scheme. But he's still really, like, really good and really scary. And and in fifth, I'd put Ubi. This is no disrespect to Ubi. But out of the five, I think I'd, like... If I saw teams... And I'm going, man, this team is scary. I think the odds of it being, if say all five of these people are on a different team, the, pri the priority of these rankings is probably accurate of how I'd feel about how scared I'd be. Abby's great. Also, it's really funny to put Abby in fifth. Bro gets fifth all the time. Who has the most raw skill? I think Kel is once again at number one because he's literally like a semi CS pro. He's like, he's absolutely insane. Just like mechanically, like mentally, like every aspect of the game. Like he, ha he, has, the, he has the mechanics down. Like he, he understands what he's doing and like he never really falters when it comes to mechanics. He's very, very consistent. That is the correct word. Abby, I have above me at second. I think Ubi, Ubi's mechanics are super, like, I don't think people talk about them as much, just as compared to, because there's so many event players, but Ubi is like a demon. <laughs> Ubi, I've seen that guy play Minecraft and Valorant. He just, his aim is nuts, so he has very good mechanics. And he, he's, I think he's been on a bit of a tear recently, so that explains a lot. I put myself dead in the middle. I think... I have a super consistent like aim and movement. I don't think it's as my peaks of raw mechanics would get as high as someone like Kel or Abby, but I think I'm like in a slight level below where my consistency is there, but my peaks aren't as high. And then Toph, I have in fourth, like Toph's mechanics aren't even remotely bad. He's a big speedrunner. Um or he was like back in the day he did some speedrunning I'm pretty sure. Um he does a lot of MCCI like challenges. Like his mechanics are super sharp. In events he's always like like always top 5. And when you you see him but he's like really consistent. And then Kalen unfortunately I'd had to put at the bottom but it's not like a jab or anything at all. It's just someone has to be at the bottom. I think Kalen's aim isn't as good cuz we're talking about raw mechanics as some of the as the other four people here but he does make up for it in movement but that isn't enough to put him any higher i think so i'll have kaylin in the last spot so in terms of mechanics i would put i'll be first but game sense would be more like me or Cal. so in terms of general raw minecraft skill oh and then fruit has obstacles okay this is kind of a hard one for me but i would probably do fruit me Kel, that's very close. And then Kaylin Ubi. In terms of raw Minecraft skill, putting people in like new events, for example, where there's no knowledge, I would just have to do fruit because when you see him do these, he just kind of knows what he's doing. In terms of game sense, I'd put him lower, but it just kind of depends what the event is, to be honest. And first I've put Toph. I've seen this man play games. I've seen this man play speedrunning. I've watched him, we've VC'd. Bro, bro is like so mechanically there. It's like genuinely scary if I compare him to some of the other people. Like some people, if you compare it to full on events, the amount of mechanical stuff you need starts to kind of differ based on what's important for an event and what isn't. Like for example, if you're speed running, like congrats, you can open your inventory and like craft pretty fast, but that doesn't really do much in an event. When I watch Toph play, I feel like he's so just with the game, it's crazy. Uh, number two, I've put Farouk. Same, same thing. Fruit, I swear to God, has so much, like, I learned something, I learned so many small shit about him, like, every time I watch him play. It's crazy. Like, he's insane at bridging, he's insane at speedrunning, he's insane at, just like, oh my god, it's so weird watching. Um, it's the same with, like, most of the people in the first three. It's hard to gauge mechanical skills when most of the time you see these people playing in events, but when you see people playing other stuff, it's like, wow, oh my god. They are insane. In number three, I've put Abby. Abby, Abby is also like again. Th these top three is so hard to for me to like focus on. But when I watch any of the free play, like they play so different to how I play that it makes me think, wow, 
Oh my god, the mechanics, Jesus. This, there's this like bubble as well for events where if you just have the small mechanical PvP stuff, you just inherently look like you're doing so much. And it makes it seem like you're more mechanical. And I think that's the case. No, Abby's just insane. I feel like no one else is going to put this person this low, but I put Kel forth. Um, I feel like Kel plays this game so casually, and it just works so well. I don't get it. Bro just has like big brain, but then like doesn't need to be as mechanical because of it. And it's funny. Like, you'll, you'll see him play. Like, you don't see him do anything insane. You'll just see him play. And the stuff he does just works and is really cool and really good. And then, like, it makes him excel in, like, everything. He has, like, insane aim. But, like, I, I can't think of aim as part of the, the question for some reason. I don't know why. And then we got me. Hi, guys. I'm in fifth. Um, <laughs> I'm putting myself fifth because I feel like I'm very cheesy with the idea that I don't think I have that much mechanical skill in the game. I'm ass with a keyboard. I just rely a lot on like game sense and parkour. Uh, parkour can get you a long way. So most of my mechanicalness is like, what's up guys? We're gonna open the inventory. We're gonna hold the keys and open, close it. That's not very mechanical. Like I tried speed running um, and I'm only just learning hotkeys and I'm pretty sure everyone else in this list are like gods of hotkeys. My scroll wheel is my best friend. I'm perfectly fine putting myself last for this question. So when I hear raw skill, I think like, mechanics and just like i don't know aim or just like just raw mechanics in general and it's like that's that's a category i put myself higher in personally my ego wants to put myself first because i know i could be first if it was just raw skill raw mechanics but i think i'd probably just again put kel first i kind of like because i feel like kel just has one of the most insane mechanics i think i've seen and i feel like there's not a single thing in minecraft he's genuinely bad at like he's good at movement he's good at pvp he knows like his mechanics are always good at the right time he knows what to do and when to do it like and then yeah i mean he's just not really bad at anything he's good all around mechanically and i'd probably put myself second i'd say myself i have really good aim and just kind of the same things as kel but just just not putting myself first you know just to just to be humble but <laughs> i'd say i'm second then and uh fruit berries would probably be third i because fruit fruit has some crazy mechanics like have you seen that dude play obstacles nah it's just crazy fruit would have to be third i mean watching him alone is just raw skill like it's just nice to even watch him play like and then probably top fourth and then kaylin fifth and I, I don't think there's a big gap between top or kaylin or fruit berries or top but i think the gap between top and kaylin is bigger than the one between fruit and top but again none of these players are bad they're all good <laughs> it's just ranking them one to five is kind of hard but yeah i'd go kel me fruit top and kaylin that's interesting because obviously the answer would change based off of like pvp skill or movement skill i'd say probably the most raw skill would go to fruit and then it would be me and then it would be ubby and then it would be toff and then it would be kaylin i put fruit first because his mechanics are absolutely insane it just there was a while in events where he wouldn't like practice or anything and he still did really well and then now he's grinding and he's doing even better, so it's just insane. And then I was similar where I wasn't really, like, warming up or practicing or anything, but I was still doing well. And then I just feel like the other three are more, like, grinders, but I don't know exactly how much they grind and how much that compares to their skills, so I kind of just guessed for the, the last three. Who is the best team player? I'm gonna put myself number one for this one. Hey guys, did you watch PV13? Kind of won all of those. Hey guys, did you watch PV12? Kind of won... One of the- no, I'm gonna ignore the PP12 thing, ignore that, that didn't happen. I just realized we only won one of them. <laughs> um, I think I am very good at team games, and I'm a good team player, because I don't have- uh, a lot of- what a lot of people in this- these five have, is they have this, like, incredible, strong prowess in a game that, uh, tends to reward you for playing on your own, uh, and I can't really do that very often, so I get to be more of a team player in PvP games. And also, I just think I'm, like, very confident in myself when it comes to team games. I'm, re I'm really confident in Chalice Chase. I'm really confident in Trials of Fire. Don't check the stats. I'm really confident in any, any building game, which is very heavily team-based. I'm very confident in Bingo. I tr I'm very fine with team games being, like, late because I feel confident in my ability to IGL and also, like, help when needed, which is why I'm... Being very egotistical for this question. Let's go, Kaylin. Number two, I'm putting Toph. I think Toph is a really good team player just from what I've seen because he's very methodical in what he does when I watch him in an event. I feel like if I look at this list of five people, 
Poff is someone who I think would be very comfortable in a team game position. Because this kind of like stems down to how well you are IGLing as well. Because a lot of team games are based on communication. And if you can't really communicate the game well, it's not going to end very well. I have Fruit and Third. Fruit is... Fruit, my, my perception of Fruit is very heavily scaled on the fact that MCC team games are a lot more calmer, I feel like, than other events. I haven't really seen much outside of it. But I feel like Fruit is also someone who I would trust in a team game because it's very... I think he's a better listener than some of the, some of the players like in this, in this image. Well, more, more importantly, the fourth and fifth. Uh, There's a lot of trust on my end. This is how much I kind of just trust someone, I guess. And I think Fruit just comes in third. It does help that I just played an event with him with really good team placements. That makes it feel like I'm confident with him being as a team player. But obviously, I, like, I trust Toph more. Like, if I was with any of these people in, the, in a team game, it would be... I think this question is very accurate to how much I would trust them. In 4-5 Kel, but Kel's really quiet. I'm scared of him in, as a team player because... And also, he has like that, uh, that, that cloud of uh, baiting that people go on about where like he will, he will get that last hit, which is... Less important nowadays because of damage points, but you'll you'll notice it, which is it's working for him, so I can't blame him. Um, but I feel like there are instances where he will play more for the individual than the team, uh, which I think is apparent in some events, but I can't really think of any right now. Nothing bad about it. I mean, fucking, it, it works. Good for him. In fifth five, Ubi, <laughs> man, I'm being so mean to Ubi today. I'm scared of Ubi as a team player. I think he's a very heavy individual player. I think that's like one of the things where if you're just I don't think he's playing for individual, but I feel like a lot of the decisions he makes is solely for individual. And it like shows. And also I see Ubi as more of a like better at individual games. Like the like the main game I can think of him being good at is hyperdrive. And that's like purely individual. Like I think his worst games are the team games. And I'm worried for him. I put Kalen as number one because the times I've seen him like so that I've teamed with him recently in PV and also I've watched numerous of his VODs. And I would say he's easily the most vocal out of us five when it comes to like team play. He's very good at just like taking a group of people that aren't like as confident or whatever, or just like in general and just telling them exactly what they should be doing very well. And he's like quick thinking. So I put Kalen as number one. I put myself as number second. As, no, as number second, as number two, because I am in a similar boat. I obviously I've played a lot of MCCs and typically in MCC, I'm usually considered the top frag on almost every team. And I kind of have to develop that leadership, like personality. I would say, like, I play very team oriented in your MCCs, your blockers, your PVs, because it is a team event. And every player on the team is like a, at a very differing skill level. But I think I have the leadership necessary to, like, you know, get people in line, tell them what to do. Honestly, <laughs> like, this ranking is kind of wild. I put Kel at three. There's no good reason. I think he's like, at a, a like strikingly similar boat to me like he gets the whole leadership stuff uh uhc cs go he's just kind of the goat there's no rhyme or reason for him being below me same with toph toph would be in fourth can give you a good reason same with Abby. Abby's in fifth can give you a good reason team player it's like a it's like a hard question it's like a i think every single one of these players does play well with their teams obviously i don't think any one of these uh players are like selfish I'd say. So I think it's hard to rank them as team players. I think there's different types of team games. Like you can look at Sky High or SG like a team game. And then you can look at like construction like a team game. Because I mean, if you're good enough at a game like that, you can help your teammates. And honestly, that could make your team do really well in that game. Me personally, I suck at construction. So I'm, I'm going to not put that into consideration. But when you think about all team games in general, uh, even like team split games, like maybe like Chalice Chase or like Minor Mania, it's just who gives the best comms. It's who has the, be the best ideas on the spot. And I'd say, like, Toph is definitely up there. I think Toph would probably be number one, as he's always worrying about his teammates in the PvP games. He's always strategizing on the spot for his teams in other games. And I think he's definitely just always thinking. <laughs> it's a funny way to say it, but he's always thinking. And I think it always just... He's always thinking not only about himself, but his teammates as well. Other than top, I'd say all the rest of four of us are pretty close. I think we all just... I guess always thinking in the same way that I said to top, but we're always... We're always trying to win, <laughs> even with our team. So I'd say kind of a random last four, but I'll probably put like Kel, me, Kaylin, Fruit for the other four. But no, not for any specific, specific reason, but just because I think we're all just team players in our own sense. But I think Top just has that little edge over us.
My first option would be Kalen. I feel like he does extremely well leading and being a team player. Like he'll sacrifice individual performances just for the team to do well. I'd say next would go to Toph. Toph is also a really good leader. Then I would go Ubby and then I would go Fruit and then I would go myself in last. Because I feel like I can be a good leader, but I'm not consistently good enough to where I'm always leading teams into doing well. If we have a, a weaker like PvP game, for example, then sometimes I struggle being able to to make sure everyone's on the same page and we're doing well. So that's why I put myself last. For this order, I would put myself first and then Kel, Ubi, Kalen, and Fruit. I put myself first because I think, especially recently, I've gotten very good at PvP, namely just always being able to team lead and keep my team alive. I focus on making sure that no one dies on my team rather than going for kill points. Luckily, you know, when your team stays alive, it actually helps you get more points anyway. Then I, I have Kel in a close second because he's very good at that kind of thing as well. I think I'm better about playing for the team but again i think anyone can play for the team well it's just some people play more for their end of which you know it's fair enough i do that sometimes too so i can relate uh and then i think it's from down and mostly just goes from those who just kind of play with their team more in pvp games that's the main thing i have it based off of so who gives off first individual vibes for this one try to put stats aside and simply speak on feelings this is one where I don't think I would be that high in, but I, I, I could probably bet that I would be last in every single, everyone else's top five. But for my top five, first individual, first individual vibes, I'd have to put Kel first. I mean, he gets first so much, it's like, it may as well just be his last name. Like, I don't know, he's like the first place guy. Not lately, but, you know, he's still the first place guy. Just because of how good Toph was even before Kel came and how he would probably only get first in like every event and still does get first like as of lately i'd probably put Toph second and then kaylin probably third just because he also has a bunch of third a uh, bunch of first places and just gives off that vibe in like every event he plays like like if kaylin's in an event you'll see him in like the top two preds like almost in every in everyone's preds honestly and then uh just for mcc i'd probably put fruit fourth because I mean, he dominated that event for however long. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's the mechanics that just make everyone believe. Because I mean, that guy is kind of crazy. But I'm, sadly, I put myself fifth because well, I've actually never gone first indiv in an event, even though I get top five, top three every time. <laughs> I just can never get the the first indiv. One day, one day, one day. Next PB, next block wars. Trust, I'll be there for probably like the third time in a row. Not in a row, but in general, I have Kel at number one. You see him in the event. He's usually one of the easily like the top three people in each event skill wise, like raw skill wise. And you'll be like, yeah, this guy, if, if he gets first, if he gets first individual, it's just another day, you know, there's going to be a lot of glazing uh, in this round. Okay. Toph, I have it number two. I think if you took an event and you put the five of us together or not together, just any event in general, I think he would be a bit more likely than the rest of us four to get first individual. So I put him at two. Kalen, I put at three. He's insane. He has his like, he's very like, I feel like Kalen either gets like fifth or like first in an event. That's probably wrong, but like it, it's like around that range. Like you'll get like around like a, a third, a fourth, a fifth, or you'll just get like raw first or like barely second by like 10 coins. But Kalen, Kalen's a good shout in any event to put up there. Same with Avi. I, I haven't before. This doesn't really mean anything. Like, like I can't necessarily think of many times if of Avi getting first individual in an event overall. But I mean, I, I don't watch. I don't keep up with a whole lot of events. So it's on me. And I have myself in last, which is probably interesting because I probably have the most first individuals out of everyone on this list if you took every event that I've ever played in. But like nowadays, if I'm being honest, I'm like relegated to like second through fifth or not second through fifth. I'd say like second through like eighth. Most of like the high competitive events that I'm playing in MCC, I'm a very easy shoe in for top five every time. But if I'm if you get me like PB or block wars, eh, I'm going to get like thought more variable, but I'm, I'm usually not first end of anymore. So that's why I put myself at the bottom i think kel just gives off the most first individual vibes obviously he's had the most first individuals but just in general when you see kel awesome in an event you're like okay that guy's getting first so kel first and then i do me second then fruit kaylin and then ubby and kaylin and uh, fruit are pretty interchangeable but this is just based off when you see them in an event fruit is just a more well-known player and that's why he's high up and then the rest of us i think you see us and it's just like okay 
they're probably getting first. But Kel's just a little bit higher in that sense. I'm just a little bit below him. That's, and I have a little bit above Kalen. But we're all very close, I'd say. Us three at the top, at least. I, I guess the way I would interpret this is, like, <laughs> who's the protagonist? <laughs> if you look at a roster, then who do you think is going to be the main protagonist of that event? I would say that it would go me and then... Kalen and then Toph and then Fru and then Abby. In first, I'd put Kel. Come on, half the people that watch the events will click on Kel's stream just because they know he's going to do well. Like, you, you got to trust that consistency. But he's done so well as a player. Like, he deserves to easily go first in this question. I'm putting myself second. I'm so egotistical. Uh, I am very consistently good. It just, it's just a question of can I do the extra tiny thing to going first? And it's like, it's realistic. It's usually realistic. And I trust myself. In third, I put Toph. Toph is like, if I ignored myself, he would be second. Which obviously, that's just how the stats work. If there wasn't an event, with Kel in it, I think Toph is getting first easily. That's just my like go-to mental. And I, I don't think that's like easy to really think about. Like I when I think about individual a lot, I tend to just go off the person than the team because I don't want to think too hard about it. Fourth, I'd put Abby. Just because like these bottom two are weird, because it's definitely opinionated based on what events you're thinking about. Like I've seen Abby get first and stuff, but I haven't seen Abby get first in like the events that first spring to my mind. Like he hasn't got, I don't think he's got a first in Origins yet. I don't think he's got a first in PvE. When I see these bottom two, I don't think of them as they're getting first. I think of them as they're going to do great. And I think Obi fits that category higher than fifth. In fifth, I'd put Fruit. I think Fruit's a really great player. I think Fruit's really mechanically good and amazing and awesome. But like when I think of first in Div, Fruit's not usually the first thing that comes to my mind, which isn't like a negative thing. Like I think Fruit's consistently going to do well, but it's not the first like go to for when I see a roster. Other than like, I expect consistency out of fruit, which is a not which I think I I prefer consistency over first place vibes. Because if you can get first, that's cool. But if you get first in like fifteenth, it's like ah oh, yikes. Who's the best at PvP? I do me first, then Kel, then Ubby, then Fruit, and then Kalen. Me and Kel just have great general PvP game sense and. There's kind of two categories you can look at. You can look at game sense versus raw mechanics. I'd have Ubi up top for raw mechanics in terms of duels and, you know, his combos and everything. But I think game sense is just a bigger factor in events, just in PvP in general, since usually you're doing team fights. Because of that, I think me and Kel are very close, and I just have slightly better mechanics, which lets me edge him out. And then Ubi's close in third. He just makes some mistakes in game sense, but he's so close third. And then Fruit knows his pvp very well but i think he plays more solo so that's why i don't have him as high and then kaylin is just a movement player he kaylin has pretty solid game sense but he just doesn't have the mechanics to kind of let him be higher and first we have Toph. i don't think i've beaten Toph like twice in my life bro is scary has that aura if i 1v1 to be too honest i 1v1 like any of the people in this this video i'm fucked Toph is definitely the scariest out of the four so it's very easy for me to put Toph first I had a stream back uh, once back where I did stray for a bit. And I mean, the only two people out of the four are Toph and Ubby, where I like beat Ubby a bunch, like lost a bunch as well. But like Toph, fuck man. I lost, I, I beat him once and I think I just got annihilated every other time. Man's scary. But obviously my opinion is so weird because obviously, what, we have four North Americans in this video and I'm the, the silly European. So I'm like in my own bubble of 100 ping. So every time I play against anyone with less ping, they just seem like the scariest person on the planet. But no, Toph, Toph's scary. Toph is even number one for me. Number two is Abby. Abby would be higher if he beat me more on stream. <laughs> I'd be more scared of Abby if I like never actually 1v1 with him. But out of the, the five, I'm still scared. Like it's really, if I was in a situation where it's like, oh, I could go 1v1 this guy. <laughs> I'm good. I'm hiding. In number three, I'm putting fruit. This is probably recency bias, but when I was PvPing them uh, before the recent, the most recent PV, so PV13, <laughs> I was getting ass worked. I just, I just don't, I don't get it. It's so hard. PvP makes no sense. How are people so good at this? Fruit's another person where, if I was thinking in the moment, I would not run up to them at all. But if I wasn't thinking. I would more likely just aimlessly run into fruit than I would Toph and Abby, which is why they're higher. And I'm probably the only person to put Kel this low. I'm putting Kel in fourth. I think, I think he definitely has. He's good. He's good at PvP. He's higher than me. Um, but the problem is, I feel like he plays more into game sense than PvP. For the sake that I think in the one v one situation between the four other people in this list, he probably loses just because. I feel like he's just a smarter player than a, a more mechanical in the PvP sense, which is why he's fourth, but he's still like, he's so great, he's so crazy. Like, hello, have you seen like half the clips on uh, any event? 
He's, he's usually just him. For PvP, he's insane. He just might, he makes situations work really well, which is why it helps him just do great. But I think in a bubble, it's worse. Hi guys, Caitlin here to put myself in last. Probably the easiest choice of this video so far. I'm not known for PvP. I'm known for pretty much anything else in an event. I'm perfectly okay with being last in this group of five. Like I'm not bad at PvP, but I'm not good or like not great either. That it, I'm just in my own, if it's PP, I'm gonna shoot my bow, get my damage points, got a job done. If I win a round, oh, oh my god, best feeling ever. But I am a okay of being last. Easy. Me, number one, that's all I'm gonna say. Probably put Toffer Fruit at number two. It's hard to say because I haven't 1v1 Fruit much. Fruit is very good, but I haven't 1v1 Fruit much. I 1v1 Toph, I 1v1 Toph a lot, but the thing is, is when I 1v1 Toph, I seem to make him want to get offline. So, you know, with, with how quick he clicks that disconnect button, I might have to put Fruit in number two and then Toph at number three, but really close behind, but only because, only because of how quick Toph folds. That's all I'm gonna say. And then Kel fourth and then Kalen fifth. Sorry, Kalen. You got movement though. You got movement though. Okay, yeah, this is this is what I was expecting. My PvP order would go... I'm going to do this based off of raw skill and not, like, positioning or, like, how well you do in the PvP games, just based off of, like, your team or whatever. So I would go Ubby, and then I would go Hoff, and then I would go Fruit, and then me, and then Kalen. I have put Ubby in number one. I don't know, I think he says a slight bit more of consistency in specifically pvp than everyone else his highs are like very very high i think he's insane you'll like never see him do bad and like raw pvp ever and that's exactly how i feel about kel which i've put in number two you know the uhc gene the uhc gene he's like all around good at every single style of pvp because i think that's important because pvp isn't just raw sword it can be sword it can be bow it can be like anything as silly as like throwing potions at each other like <laughs> like random projectile spam like anything it could literally be anything like creeper cop when give me pvp it could literally be anything and i think i have kel at second and i have me at third and i think kel is definitely just a bit better at pvp overall than me i know pvp is definitely not my strong suit so but i i, I would say i'm pretty good at it above average like where i need to be but i will get absolutely like smoked by legacy people if i join that server I have top at four. Okay, there's kind of a reason, I guess. I would say he's more like utility and like positioning based by like a smidge more than I would be. Because I know that's my play style. I like to play more passive, more off like utility and like positioning. I would say top is the exact same, to be honest. But maybe just a, like I'm just kind of poking at hairs here uh, for good reasons. And then Kale and I have at last. And he's not bad at all. Like... Kalen's gonna absolutely beat me in fights. If you put all five of these people against each other, he would lose the most. Who's the best at movement? Oh my god, we've made it to the movement question. I'm gonna be putting myself in first. What? That's crazy. Hi guys, my entire identity is being good at movement. Um, I kind of need this. If I'm not first in at least half of these, I'm gonna be really upset. <laughs> um, I don't have the racing prowess like intimidation that other people have, but I have that like just raw movement where like. I can run away from fights really well. Like, I, I'm very consistent in the racing game. Like, obviously, I don't really win the racing game, but I do well enough that it's always, like, good. Because I think the only event is bad to not come first in racing, like, MCC. Have you seen the scoring of that game? Um, whereas, like, other these people can beat me in the racing game, but if you put pretty much almost any other movement game, I'm probably going to win outside of, like, a few tiny cases. It's so scared putting myself in first. I have to talk good about me. Uh, number two, I'm putting Toph, mainly because... I'm kind of scared as well of them. But when I think of movement, I'm more think I'm more just like default to ah parkour. I'm pretty good at that. Uh, and then like obviously I'll beat Toff in parkour, but like Toff will basically be like equals. We're I'm pretty we're pretty much equals in racing games. Well, I don't know the last time he's beaten me in a racing game, but he has beaten me in a racing game. He's very consistent because he's like anyone in this video is consistent because they're a smart player. They fall a little bit behind. But like, out of the four people like left, I think Toph is way more consistent and way more safe to have a movement game late compared to some of these others. In third, I have Fruit. Fruit is really, really good at bridging and block placing and like obscure movement. But when it comes to like flat movement and uh, parkour, I think Fruit falls off a little bit. Toggle sprint players, am I right? When I watch Fruit do parkour, I think Fruit tends to have like the basics pretty consistently. But when it comes to anything that gets a little bit more scary, I think 
is where it ends for fruit, which is pretty much the case for the other two as well. But it's more, I think fruit has so much more other things that makes it so it's easier to put fruit in third than like fourth or fifth. And fourth with Abby. Abby probably would have been fifth if he didn't uh, start speedrunning some parkour maps on Zero Minor. And then he did. And he's doing pretty good in the one map he sped run. He's also got the block placing skills that... Look, if this question was block placing, I would not be in first because everyone else here is really good at block placing. But like, I think Abby has the same problem with everyone where he's not really like tuned in to parkour as consistently as other like higher end movement players that he will kind of just run the jump, which is scary. And I, like that works. Like obviously if you do the jump, great. But it's not consistent and things will go wrong, which gives you the higher range. He's also the best Elytra person out of these five easily. But Elytra is so hard to scale as a movement, like in a whole, because it's just its own small thing. Whereas like if I was to rate these five people based on running in a Minecraft planes, I, I think Ubi would fit this placement pretty well. That's such a random way to think of it, but my brain is spinning. And then fifth we have Kel. Damn. Put Kel in fifth. That's crazy. Kel doesn't know anything parkour. Bro runs it. It's not fair. He, I mean he makes it most of the time. I can't blame him. It makes him better at just the racing games. He doesn't really like Think too hard about the jumps, he kind of just does it. I don't blame him. But I think if I was to, if a, if a movement game was chosen and I was to look at this in it, uh, like look at these group of people and think, who do I think is going to like win and who won't? Kel is the fifth in this, but it doesn't mean anything bad. Again, this, this is really hard to rank people. I think Kel could get better at movement. I just don't think Kel wants to. Huh, I wonder who's first. I wonder. I wonder. I really wonder. Um, nah, but uh, I'll put Kalen at number one. He, he's just kind of gotta be, I can't lie. Like, he's, he's he's just been that guy, I can't lie. So, Kalen number one, huh. I'd probably put... Well, when you think movement, you think of parkour, racing games. You could also think of, like, games, like, obstacle games, too, which I also consider movement. So, considering all of that... I'd probably put me, fruit, or top second. Well, that's a, that's, a, that's almost everyone, but uh, I'd probably put top second, fruit third. Although I think me and fruit are pretty even in like racing games and uh, parkour. I think he has the edge of me, edge over me in uh, block placing. So then I'd probably put me fourth and then Kel fifth. Sadly, but there is like a very small gap between second to fourth. I'd say. Like, Kalen does kind of gap us, I can't lie. Okay, first off, we just ha I have to go Kalen first at movement because Kalen does t <laughs> insane marathon runs in, like, less than 12 hours or whatever the record is at now. Dude plays parkour pretty much every day and does extremely well all the time in parkour games, so that that's number one no matter what. I'd say after that, it would go tough and then Ubi and then me and then fruit would be my order because i do pretty consistently well in like the racing games but toff and ubby do well in like the pure parkour games better than i do so that would be my list i have kaylin at number one he's insane at parkour he does the pure pain marathon stuff he's time and time like every time you'll see him in an event he will dominate the parkour game that's like that's literally his whole thing so i think i have to like he has to be number one here. Now, the thing is, the question is movement. And movement is not just parkour. It can be like block placing, like PvP movement, like your strafes and stuff. Um, even though his block movement, I would say out of the five of us, is probably the worst. His PvP movement is perfectly fine. And his parkour is just so good to where I think he still has to be in number one. I have Kellen too. He is like at a level of consistency. Where it's just insane. Like for how little I feel like he parkours comparatively uh i feel like i'm in the same boat where i really don't parkour as much as i should be but kel is just insane he has the consistency not much to be said like his block movement very very good his parkour not as good as kaylin but like you're you're getting there in terms of like general parkour i don't even remember what i was saying earlier like his pvp movement's insane so like he has to be there i would say my pvp movement's pretty good uh my block placing obviously that's like what people say like oh this guy can this guy can place blocks. So that's like my one edge. Because my general parkour definitely isn't as good. I, I have a bit to work on in, in terms of like speed. Because I'm getting my consistency. My consistency is getting a bit better. But I'm no, I'm nowhere near as good as Kalen or Kellen Raw parkour. I have Ubi in fourth. I think Ubi's block placing is also insane. Like very close to mine if not like the same level same goes to like his pvp movement's really good i just don't know if his parkour is as good i literally have no idea so i'm gonna have to put him at four and then toff 
uh he just has to be at the bottom with everything that i said which is insane because he'll i feel like his regular parkour movement is great his block placing is probably fine and his pp movement is probably fine but i i I don't have any reason to put him higher just because I don't have that information. So, well, Kalen is an easy first for this. And then I would do Brute in second, Ubby in third, and then I guess L fourth and me fifth. Except this is a very close one. I think bottom four are almost interchangeable. Kalen's just the most consistent, and the rest are almost interchangeable. I think in general, I've been choking in movement games a lot, so I'd even put myself at the bottom. Basically, Kalen's up top, the rest are interchangeable, because Kalen is just my movement goat. Who has the best game sense? I think in terms of game sense, first has to go to me. I feel like game sense comes very naturally to me. And even though I ranked myself lower on like the PvP and the leadership aspects, I still have really good game sense. And that's why I do well in games a lot of the time. Um, after that, I would go Ubby and then Fruit and then Toph, and then Kalen. This is, I feel like this is the hardest category for me because I feel like we all have really good game sense. So it feels really close between some people here. Putting Kellen first. Kel, I mean, I, I can't really put anyone else here. The amount of like stuff you've seen this man do, uh, game sense wise, like, come on, who's getting 60 bajillion kills in Sky High and being like, <laughs> yeah, I fluked that. When I think about game sense, it comes down to three categories. It's like game sense in the essence of how to position yourself in a PvP game. You have game sense of like how to how well can you help or how how well can you analyze like a team game. And then you've also got like how well you can game sense in terms of we should probably go for this game or that game or our team probably would perform better at this and that. I think Kel has the PvP down fully. I think Kel's really good at analyzing a team game thing, and I, I have no idea about his voting capabilities, but I think it's very hard not to put Kel first because he has so many things that have been super good on his end based on his game sense that it's hard not to really just put him first. Wow, Kalen's putting himself second again? That's crazy. Uh, I'm putting myself second. I think I have a really good game sense. Like, I, I think I'm known. This is kind of an IGO question because it's kind of how good you are as in-game leader because if you're a good leader you're gonna have good game sense just, essence, in, just in essence i think most of the time i make the right decision there are a few like silly dumb things but that's more of gameplay than game sense like i think i'm very quick to realize what might be a good thing to do in a in an event game and it's like shown in like for example uh factory frenzy realizing <laughs> realizing uh where to put like people in like the right spot in terms of because the game was new and no one really knew what to do and it worked really well like oh my god uh and then there's minor mania where uh, if anyone's seen uh pv13 we have the whole hiding behind the diamond cube that's like game sense right there because you have to figure out the game and how other people plays and what their mental are i wouldn't say i'm good at voting um there is very good cases of me voting and then our team wins in reverse game order that is why I try not to vote ever, uh, unless I really have to, because voting is scary. But I think the only like doc I have to actual game sense, because voting is so small in the grand scheme, is I think I'm not the best at positioning in PvP games, but I think I make up for it with a lot of other things that it helps in the grand scheme. Because this is game sense is it can also lie down to how consistent you are, and I think my consistency very shows by how often I get the same placement. In fact, I have Toph. Again, really hard to rank these five people. <laughs> Toph, I think, is a very good IGL as well. I think he is very consistent at decision making. I just think Toph's doc that puts him below me is, I think, in some instances, in like if things are going wrong, I don't think Toph is very good at figuring out a way out of it. And then it just like, kind of spirals. Like I think that was the case I got a lot. I'm going back to PB13 a lot. Uh, but in PB13's Minor Mania, I think his team just started losing and it just spirals down instead of them figuring out how to fix it, which is obviously is not their fault. But it definitely shows like a lot of game sense can turn down to your decision makings in the good and the bad. And you need like a good mix of both for it to feel good. And I think Toph is just missing a little bit on that one end, but he'll figure it out. Hopefully. 4-5 Ubi. It's hard to rank Ubi in Fruit because I see much of their gameplay compared to the other two. Again, when if you're fourth on this list, you're not really like bad at game sense. You're just slower out of the five. And I think I think a lot of Ubi's decision makings are very like snap in the moment, which can be good, but also can backfire, which is very apparent in some cases. 
it's good to have snap decisions. The benefit is it's fast. Your, your team can respond to it. In most events, the games are really fast anyway, so you kind of need that. But you also need that like security that what you're saying makes sense and is also like, I think this is smart and I should do this. But I think where RB falls a little bit flat on, but I still think he's great. And then fifth, I have fruit. Like fifth again, doesn't mean anything bad, but I think fruit is a bit of a like internal fault than an external fault. So a lot of his game sense is good in t like internally, but the problem is a lot of his game sense doesn't really get like shown because it's more internal, so you don't see it. So a lot of things you're thinking that doesn't happen, and you can't really like explain it in a way. And then it kind of shows because um you'll have games where it just goes astronomically wrong. You're just thinking about what things you could have done. And I think if a game goes right for Fruit, he'll still be thinking that. I don't know. I'm completely waffling. Fruit's fifth. Fruit, fruit's great. But I put Fruit fifth. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Game says is hard, man. This is the one thing I've decided to put myself at the top at, which honestly might surprise people. But I think I'm way more, like in my own mind, I'm way more of a team oriented like game sense like i understand the games like i understand like where i should be like what i should do uh, a lot more than i believe in my own like mechanical ability to be honest especially because i know my mechanical consistency can be on and off but i feel like i can just get away with just pure understanding game mechanics like i said the things i previously mentioned and like what I should be doing. I think I have it like very, very down at this point, especially because the more I play these events, I think the more it like builds up. And that goes for everyone on this list. I think I get the game, the game sense. I think I have it understood. Same with Kalen. I don't know. I have Kalen at number two. He's a very good leader. And I think he understands like the positionings and like what you should be doing in each game mode very well. Kellen three. Uh, I don't know. Uh, honestly, he has the same like team oriented brain and like understanding, like deep understanding of just like specific mechanics and like where he should be at a given time and like when he should make riskier plays and when he should make safer plays. I think he has that down very clearly. He doesn't like get caught off by much. I have Toph in fourth. <laughs> no good reason, honestly. And I'll be in fifth. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't I, I don't really have a good reason. I think when it comes to game sense, I'd have to put Toph first. As I said before, he is just always thinking. He just, I feel like he just has the brain for it. I mean, this guy was like a tutor in high school. This, this he's, he's a smart guy. Let's just say that. But with whoever, I think he could genuinely do good in a PvP game with almost any team. You know, unless it was that bad. But I think he could do good in a PvP game with almost any team. But number two, I'd have to put Kel just with his performances in team games in general, with how he can just carry his teams by such a huge load, huge load and just gap everyone. It's honestly kind of crazy, but I have to put Kel second just because of that. For third, fourth, fifth, I think it's pretty close between me, Kalen, and Fruit. I'd probably put myself third just because I think I also have a really, really good game sense in just like all team games in general. Uh, I feel like the only game that I might lack in <laughs> might be like, minor mania maybe it's just a little goofy game but i think it's not that big of a gap between me fruit or kaylin but i'd probably put myself third uh kaylin fourth and then fruit berries fifth for game sense i'd put myself first hell second a very very close second it's like almost tied i'll be third kaylin fourth and fruit fifth game sense is just being able to understand the game and what the best strategy is and kel is very good at that but I, I think I, I think I might have edged him out recently. Kel's always been the best, but I think now I've just been able to do very well in that sort of thing. However, I think Kel could easily be better than me. So it's very close up to you. Ubi in general understands games well and he's able to understand them fast. Where Kalen can do that too, but I think Ubi's just a little bit more consistent at it and can do it better in maybe the first time playing the event. And Fruit, I think he just doesn't have as much experience. So he can understand a game, but normally I find that from what I've seen, at least, he doesn't really understand the best way to play a game unless he kind of, you know, analyzes it or is told by another person. So who has the most stinkers in first? I have fruit. I love fruit. Fruit's great. But I feel like if fruit is having an event that's not going well, I think fruit also individually gets like affected by it as well. I think fruit's a very uh, if his team does well, he does well type of player. And I think it shows in some events but it's also skewed that a lot of the stinkers i'm thinking of a fruit are very specifically like his debut event where he's not like too accustomed to the game so it's hard to like scale it but i think fruit if i think of these five people he has more bad events than other people on the list because I'm gonna be real a lot of people in these lists are very consistent so it's hard to when you scale stinkers there are not many of them <laughs> in second i have abby same logic abby's great i just think abby has had more like unfortunates than others because obviously 
I go by averages. Like this, 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 this list is very heavily just the average of PB. But Abi is like it depends what you count as a stinker. Like if you're a consistent player, does, does, but if you're like consistently tenth, does, does that like in the scale of these five, that's just technically just all ass. But they're, they're not. Um, like Abi has a bunch of like fifth or lesses, which is like my brain's mental of man, you suck, which isn't true. Like fifth is great, you're amazing, Abi. But like it shows comparing some of these other people, like. Abby's Origins debut wasn't like as clean as I thought it would be for him. I expect, like, I don't know. Maybe I I, I predict Abby higher than I, I normally should, but Abby gets fifth a lot. And I think fifth for him is mentally lower than what I expect, which makes it a stinker. I don't know. Abby, I love you. You're great. I have myself in third. It's hard at this point with these last three people. Um, But I have had two mentally really bad events in my eyes, which isn't even bad. I got seventh and sixth once uh, to the point where it's like it just looks bad because I'm so consistently getting second, third, and fourth that when I see fit a sixth and seventh, it's like, okay, something went wrong. Like the conditions for me to get seventh in PB9 was I did bad in movement and PvP, and it like it wasn't even bad. It just felt bad to the point where obviously I got seventh, and it felt I left that event going, man, that was ass. I don't feel as bad about the sixth because that was a debut, and also like the team wasn't doing that great on the day. But obviously that's just an excuse. Like it's still bad in the eyes of these five like people in the list and then the other two i just the other two i haven't listed yet i just think are don't ha have as many like low roles but i also just could be completely wrong because this is just in the moment opinions but i'm gonna safely put myself in third it's more embarrassing if i put myself in fourth and i'm just wrong so i'd rather just be i'd rather put myself in that middle ground as i'm pretty cool four five tough it's really hard to think of bad things that have like bad stinkers that tough has had you can only think of one which is in origins where you got ninth but i also am like not thinking too hard about placements and I, well he says i'm not looking too in depth about it like toff might have more stinkers than me but he's also played like 12 more events than me and then like the four that i'm thinking of in this like entire video but when i think of toff as a player i don't think of him as someone that's had like that a bad event i just think of him as like damn he's gonna do well and that's why he's fourth on this oh my god guys carl's in fifth no way <laughs> Maybe one time he's placed below third you can it's possible it's just more awkward than you think. I think Kel's gotten sent in a mayhem once, and that's like his one stinker I can think of. But so many ones add up, man. You 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 get so many ones and your bad result. People be like, oh well, Kel only got seventh because his team did shit. When that's just like, you, you, it's so hard to blame Kel to the point where it's really hard to see him as someone that's had like stinkers to begin with, which is why it's so easy to just put Kel in fifth. Maybe as time grows, bro will start sucking. And then this list changes, but as it is right now, a lovely July 2024, um, this is this is what I think. I think Kel is doing a pretty good job. The most stinkers has to be Brute first, I'll be second. And now the next three are very close because we I don't think any of us have had many stinkers, but Halen third, and then me fourth, and Kel fifth. If you I think if you look recently in the past year or so, me, Kalen, and Kel have basically placed top three in every event we've played in. So it's very, very hard and it's very close. In general, Fruit just doesn't know events as well. So, you know, he doesn't play in as many. So yeah. that's why I put him lower. And I'll be, I'll be chokes pretty often. I'll be still a great player, but he'll, he'll get his like seventh places in events. Now, the rest of us are just super close. I think my only non top three in the past th year is I just got fourth place in Mayhem. I think Kel might have had like one fifth or something. Kalen had like one six in like fruit wars or something but it's just very very close so those three are hard to rank but i i have to put fruit first and i'll be second at least i think out of everyone here there's a really big gap between everyone and then maybe like two people so for most stinkers i will gladly take number one you know i will gladly take number one i think my first block was i got like i think i got like 14th or some shit and then i think my first uh mayhem i got like 10 or something like that to be fair that mayhem one was on a, like a russian server so i will i i will gladly take the 10th place as i could not play any pvp game but i'll gladly take that number one spot um i don't even know like the rest of these people haven't even put up like stinkers like i'd probably put fruit second just because he's had lower placements and events like pb or mayhem than the other three so probably fruit second i'd probably put Halen third and then Toph fourth and then kel fifth was just because i mean kel is just probably the most first indivs out of everyone here i know he has more than me for sure you know so i'll i'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that yeah so so me through kaylin Toth, and 
Cal? Uh, the most stinkers list. I think I think Kalen would have the most stinkers, and then Fruit, and then Toph, and then Ubby, and then me. I was gonna put Ubby higher on this on the stinker list, but Ubby's very consistent in a couple events, so it like. Like extremely consistent, like PB, it's like third to fifth every single event that he's played in. So that's the least stinker that you could possibly be in an event. <laughs> and then I've never gotten, I got seventh in one mayhem because of spleef. And then besides that, I haven't been outside of top five. So I definitely get the least stinker list there. I'm not even going to lie to you. I put myself at the top because I've had a lot of bad moments. Um, I also comes with just playing more, but I mean, I got second in an event that was worth a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that speaks for itself, honestly. Um, but just overall, I've I've had a lot of very very high highs, but an insanely also high amount of low lows. Like it's balanced out heavily for me. I have so many just like off performances or just whatever like i've I've just been through so much that i have so many bad performances out there i'm not gonna lie to you the other four names i put in a random list generator and those are the options (laughs) random numbers decided avi has the second most stinkers awkward um Kale is in third, <laughs> Doff is in fourth, and then Kalen has the least amount of stinkers. Let's go Kalen, honestly.